Th I was a last minute replacement. I just true. flew in. I, as was Colin. Just flew in from New York City, and boy, is my middle finger tired. But you know, <laughs> I grew up back east, and I still have an apartment in New York, and I go back and forth between LA and New York. The difference between the two places, basically this. Here in LA, I'm perceived as kind of a fast-talking, little bit hot-headed, streetwise guy from Jersey. In New York, everyone thinks I'm gay. <laughs> Tough town, that's all I'm saying. I'm not gay. Though the way my social life is going, it's nice to know it's there. <laughs> you start scrambling around, you wanna have that safety valve outlet pass. Not to say I'm not looking downfield, just everyone seems to be covered. <laughs> I'm not afraid to be gay. A little nervous about that initiation ceremony I heard about. How are you, John? Uh, I'm okay. I got serious. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I got big problems. <laughs> I got financial. I put myself in a position financially, and it's probably not smart, but I put myself in a position financially where I absolutely must win the lottery. <laughs> I'm a psychiatric hypochondriac. I hear about a problem, I'm sure I have that problem. I gotta run out by the newest self-help book. I just bought this book, Men Who Are Afraid of Commitment. But I didn't buy it, I took it out of the library. But, um... Okay, I didn't read it, I skimmed it still. It's a real book, I didn't make that title up. It's in the long line of those self-help books. I think the most famous one called, uh, Women Who Love Too Much, have you heard of that one? That one I bought because uh, I thought it was a directory. I would have... Uh, <laughs> thought it was gonna have the actual names and numbers, maybe a trip tick, tell you where to stop and get gas. <laughs> Here's a, I have a question. How long after you break up with someone do you continue to read their horoscope in the newspaper? <laughs> I think we've all done that a little too much. <laughs> but more importantly, what do you really hope to see? You know, something about a bone marrow transplant. <laughs> hey, tough luck this month, Scorpion. <laughs> tough luck. I don't, you know, I certainly don't wish that on anybody. And not, not on my former girlfriend because, you know, somewhere deep inside there's a tiny ember of a hope that maybe someday it will, you know, be rekindled and we'll get back together. Do you really think that's possible? Is that a real feeling? I mean, it's possible. I mean, I know, I know she still has feelings for me. Unfortunately, those feelings are a combination of pity and disinterest. <laughs> so, at least it's not uh, genetic, I know that. My sister has two lovely kids, my niece and nephew. Very grown up for their age. One reason, they encourage the kids to call them by their first names. They're little kids. I never hear them say mommy and daddy. It's Steffi and Mark. I think that's weird. And I think it's wrong. But I'm old fashioned, you know, I'm not married, so naturally, you know, my kids call me, um, the defendant. <laughs> it's a joke! Don't have any kids. So I do have a foster child. For several years now, I have a little girl in Thailand. I send her money and she sends me drawings of a hut. It's not a good deal. <laughs> It's a great deal. More people should do it. I recommend it very highly. It's neat. You get a picture, a name, occasional letters. But you're not really sending money to that kid. You're sending money to a centralized fund. It's then split up by the entire village. You think about it, that makes sense. You can't send money to one kid. Kid next door can't be starving to death. Flies buzzing around its head. Your kid's got a new Walkman and a skateboard. <laughs> Whoa, got me a foster sugar daddy, all right. Yo, Bonji, you got change of a hundred? <laughs> Didn't think so! <laughs> one kid can't be starving while the other one's rich. That'd be like, like, this country. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> My brother just got married. I went to the wedding, it was in Israel, where he lives. He lives there because he's studying to become a rabbi. Honest to God truth, he's already a certified public accountant and a lawyer. <laughs> Apparently attempting to become a Jew cubed.
going for the very rare Hebrew hat trick. <laughs> he shoots, he scores. Uh, I did, I got to see how my brother lives, which, very different. He's very religious. Now, does he live in like on a kibbutz in the whole... No, he, he lives in Jerusalem, the Holy Land, and uh, he's very religious. And uh, I don't know all religions, but Ju Judaism especially is a code of rules, a set of laws that you live by, except the Jews can find loopholes for the laws if they want to. For instance, you can't do anything on the Sabbath, right? So you can't even push a button. So you'd think you couldn't ride in an elevator. Except I go visit some guy at his apartment, he's on the eighth floor on the Sabbath. They've got two elevators. One's the Sabbath elevator. Friday and Saturday, automatically all day, stops at every floor on the way up and every floor on the way down, nonstop, all weekend, as if God is going, you got me! <laughs> uh, that was awful crafty, making it go automatic like that. Uh, I should have thought ahead. Uh, who knew? I guess I did. I took the opportunity to visit uh, Egypt, and I went and saw the pyramids. Unbelievable. They make quite an impression. A lot of rocks piled high was the impression I came away with. You gawk at it, and you think, my God, how do they do this? Moreover, why did they do this? <laughs> I think it was the Pharaoh wanting to keep these people busy. You know what I'm saying? Jobs. I think we can see from our own economy how people get a little antsy when they're out of work. <laughs> Highway project going nowhere. A lot of those late night commercials. Have you always liked working with rock? Like piling things high? Want to help a Pharaoh ascend to heaven that pyramid building could be for you? Just call this guy, that guy, that guy, this guy, this guy, that guy, that guy, this guy. Call now. Because there are so many things to wonder about when you read the Bible. If you read the Bible, it's a good book. The good book. A little bit preachy, you know. <laughs> I wonder if when Jesus performed a miracles, miracles, if there was a beautiful woman there next to him, going. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe Jesus was there, I've got a fish. I've got two fish, thank you. <laughs> What's that behind your ear? It's a loaf of bread, thank you. Can I get a leper from the crowd, please? A leper, please. Have we ever met, sir? Have we ever met? Some people think that's kind of offensive. Obviously, I don't. <laughs> I try to help my niece and nephew with their education. I like to read them stories from the Bible, and then, of course, change the ending. <laughs> Good, clean uncle fun. I sit him down, and Noah looked to the heavens and said, God, when you told me it would rain and the lands would flood, I believe you. And I built this mighty ark so that we might be saved. But I pray to you now, tell me, how much longer will these rains continue? And God said, well, Noah, let's go to the satellite map. <laughs> See a high pressure front moving over Mesopotamia. It's going to meet with a warm front over the Dead Sea. Let's go to the 40 day, 40 night forecast. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.